Hey guys, welcome back. These monsters. Um, we have got a lot of stuff around this. Now that is a very act. This cable can take 75 amps, which is what the nominal power will be of the Variac. So that will do us just fine. A bit of 4 gauge. Um, and if you guys are metric, that is 21 millimeter square cable. So I think that'll should do the job properly. Running on just a few cups of coffee should help me get through this. We're getting somewhere at least. Got some thick wire to add to this thing. Let's do it. Alright, I think we need to have some wiring in there then including the uh, panel. Just started on the uh, paralleling coils. So let's continue the build then, shall we? Right. In three, two, one. <clears throat> oh, shit. I need to hit the gym. Alright, so I think we've got the uh, power supply in there finally. Now it's time to wire that up. I got it nicely cleaned up and greased up here on the gear. So I think that'll do just fine. All right, let's put it together. Moment of truth soon. It's done. After eight months, it's the front panel. Top portion, don't mind the shitty paint job. Inlet for control panel, inlet for Variac, outlet for Variac, circuit breaker for the front panel, and the back side has nothing, but we do have four handles which makes this thing a whole lot easier to move, so let's turn it on and see what it does. Alright, now to energize this power supply, there's a side breaker and two emergency stop buttons to release, one on the top and one on the panel. Once those are all engaged, a key switch is turned, which allows us to get power to the panel, and this tells us the voltage that is on the panel, which is roughly mains voltage. Once we're all set there, we can turn on the power supplies individually to um, reduce the inrush by individually activating the power supplies. Now, once all three power supplies are energized, we're able to use the output functions of the power supply. Now the reason why I have it set up like that is because we don't want to be running one or two variacs on the 80 amp circuit breaker that is protecting this entire unit. So now, once all three power supplies are energized, to turn on the output are those three switches there. So that's off and then on. And we've got two indicators on the top that will tell us 
if the power is on or off on the output. That latch switch is disengaged. It is momentarily. It's good for a safety precaution if we needed it. Um, then we've got our voltage controls. Now to adjust the voltage on this unit, a switch here activates power to the motor of the variac that turns up the voltage. So now, you can see the voltage here is rising. I really don't need to hold that button down to turn the voltage up. This meter tells us input power and this one is output. And I can stop it anywhere and adjust it accordingly. Now once we get our voltage that we want we can then energize the output. Now you can see there's 183 volts there. Now this meter tells us what's on the output of the variac before the output switch is energized. So you can see this is registering nothing and this tells us that there is a decent amount of voltage there so that will just indicate what level of power there is before I do hit the output switch. It's very good to have. So now another good function on this power supply is the cooling fans. There's two of them. That gets the job done if we're cranking it up stupid or crazy or whatever. Now there's another switch on this unit which is this middle switch. Now if I turn it to the other position, it's a two position switch, the output de-energizes. Now if I try to use the output switches they don't engage. That's because this switch goes from a panel mode to a, a remote mode. If I can speak English that would be a miracle. Which this lovely little box can plug into a small inlet just down there and then I'm able to use the output of the power supply without having to be at the panel within about 20 feet and it works the same way except to keep the power on you have to hold it down which I think is a good tool to use especially for using it for maybe high voltage or you know whatever so that's how this power supply works it's very good and it's, I think we're going to have some fun with this thing very soon. So I think we ought to do a load test on this thing. See how much power this thing can actually handle. So let's go ahead and do that. Now one thing I did forget to mention is that this meter is input power, panel voltage, preview voltage, and then output power voltage and current. And then we've got our amp meters for each individual variac. So let's give this a load test and see what it can take. Let's turn up our voltage and see what we get. Output's live. Power's coming up. Thousand watts going into that. Ooh, that's quite the jump there. 97 amps off power source going into that bucket right there. I don't know if the circuit breaker is going to take it. I don't think it's rated for 110 amps. 21,000 watts, Jesus. Up and down. Oh. I'm cranking it up. Oh shit. Oh crap. Oops, daisies. I made a mess.
thousand watts. Alright, well I think this unit is finally complete, and we can confirm that this thing is ready for our crazy experiments. That's where the power comes in, comes out. These are our circuit breakers. This is our breaker, 5 amp circuit breaker for our control panel. We've got an 80 amp for the main input, three circuit breakers for the outputs of each individual variac. Those are 25 amps a piece. And then we've got an 80 amp circuit breaker for the main output. And that's how that works. It's pretty simple. And neutral just gets bonded directly to the output in the variac. And that's how that works. And then we've got the two paralleling coils that are inside of there. That just makes sure that these variacs are not, are not uh, outputting vastly different voltages causing unwanted current flow. And yeah, that's how this unit works. All the relays and switching is done up here. Don't mind it, it's a teeny weeny bit messy, but it works. We've got our three variac starters and our main output contactor. And then of course we've got our current sensing transformers. There's a few of them. And then there's one back there. And this is where all the control switching is done. So that's how this unit works. It's very, very simple. Everything is bonded to ground. Very important. So I think, I think we can close this thing up. Oh, and I forgot there's some wiring up here too for the indicators and emergency stop button. And that's the main inlet there for the control panel. So there's two different inputs. So that's how this wonderful unit works. So I hope you guys liked today's video. This is quite the achievement actually. I've been waiting to hear this thing running for quite some time. And now that we finally have it built, we can really, really destroy some things. I do need to get a voltage doubling transformer for this so that we can blast things with 500 volts of electricity. I do have a voltage doubler that's 3000 watts, but this thing is definitely going to push more than 3,000 watts through it because this thing is just absolutely brutal. In fact, it wants more than what the house can offer, which is very nice. So this thing will not destroy itself when we do experiments. So I want to thank you guys for the patience, and we've got videos coming up. I do have college, so things are a little bit tight with time. So. Whenever I do get the idea or stumble upon, you know, a kettle or a microwave or a toaster or whatever, we'll finish it off completely on this unit and I'll record it for you guys. So, once again, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the patience and we've got experiments to do. So, I'll see you guys later.